Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, December 5th, 2017. I wanted to cover a few things here. We'll touch on, uh, give a brief update on the markets, uh, mainly QQQ. That's where my focus lies. I already mentioned we've seen some sector rotation out of uh, the tech stocks um, and into other areas like uh, financials and transportation stocks, energy stocks. Uh, I do want to touch on energy. Uh, there are some things I'm seeing there. I didn't have time to cover that in yesterday's video, but I, 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 there's quite a bit I want to cover on, on crude oil and as well as the energy stocks. So I'll get to that after doing a brief uh, overview of the markets here. And then if time permitting, I did see a, um, a, a break of support in gold, which, you know, unless that uh, gets reversed soon, that that's near term bearish for gold. So I'll try to touch on that. All right, so where are we at on Qs? Uh, this is, uh, we have yet another, a, a second uh, divergent low, really an extension or consecutive divergent low, you can see here. Uh, if you recall, if you've been following my analysis, we had this rising wedge pattern on the 60 minute chart, broke down from there. We had a snapback rally, uh, at which point we had hit support at that point, and I was expecting a bounce, and then one more thrust down to marginal new low, which we got. That marginal new low, there was divergence in place. We did bounce. It was a sharp bounce, but it was reversed, and that reversal was very impulsive. In fact, we put in a bearish engulfing candlestick on the daily chart yesterday, so that's something we'll have to watch for today to see if we get any more downside. I'll talk on that in the daily chart in just a second here. So uh, point being that 60-minute uh, time frame, uh, you know, as a swing trader, uh, this is one of my favorite time frames, my go-to time frames, trying to, uh, you know, look for either trend reversals from an uptrend to a downtrend, look for these divergent highs, divergent lows for the bottoms. Uh, you can find continuation patterns patterns on here, bull flags, bear flags, uh, uh those type of things, and uh, I think it's just one of the best time frames. But again, I always, 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 always use, you know, look at multiple time frames because you may want to miss something, especially the longer term time frames. If you get lost, you know, this has been great for day traders and, and short term swing traders recently. We've finally seen an uptick in volatility, especially in the NASDAQ and tech stocks. Um, now, the thing is, uh, you don't want to get lost or caught up in the world of the intraday charts, five minute, 15 minutes, 60 minutes. You always want to keep an eye on the daily time frames because those are your more significant support resistance levels. And um, so you might be looking at, let's say, a uh, like this divergent low here, looking for a big pop up in, in the queues uh, and, and to position to go long for the next, uh, you know, next swing trade like this and the next uptrend. But yet the queues run into resistance on the daily. I'm just using an example. Um, so that's why I like to pay attention to uh, all the time frames. Now, at this point, we have what I call, you guys have probably heard me say this before, potential divergence. This is something I've made up. Maybe it's in the textbooks, maybe not. Uh, to me, uh, we do have um, divergence right now because the indicators, in this case, the PPO and the RSI, are making higher lows versus their previous reaction lows. Uh, but I like to see it confirmed via a bullish crossover uh, on the PPO. So you have this blue line here, which is a PPO line. Uh, it'll look almost identical to the MACD. If you put a MACD up, it should look very similar, uh, very close. Uh, and then you have the signal line. Once that PPO line crosses above there, and it's a 60-minute chart, so you'd want to see a solid 60-minute close above, then you have confirmed divergence. Now that's not... If, at some level, it can be a buy signal. Bullish crossovers on PPOs and MACDs, uh, some people use those as buy and sell signals. I use them in conjunction with other things. So I just wanted to say right now the outlook um, is bullish, cautiously bullish, uh, because we have those divergences. We don't have it down here on the 1333 histogram. Uh, usually you get them on all three. I, I, I typically notice that, so there's a little pause for concern. And we've also seen some pretty quite uh, pretty bearish action lately in the tech stocks, semiconductors, and everything else. Um, maybe just a pullback, maybe letting out some steam, maybe not. Um, but it's also worth noting that the trend indicators, uh, this PPO signal line, the 9 EMA, uh, serves pretty, uh, does a pretty good job as a trend indicator when it's above the zero line, as it's been through most of this time here, it's bullish. And when it's below the zero line, crosses below, it's bearish. Uh, so it's good for gaming or helping to identify short-term trends. Again, remember, we're only dealing with a 60-minute chart here. This is an intraday chart, so you're not looking at the long-term trends here. 
And uh, so as of now, you have some mixed signals. So you have this divergence down here, um, but you still have the trend indicators bearish. You can see this 1333. When that histogram is red, it means that 13 uh, period EMA is below the 33. And that again helps to confirm these bearish trends that you have here. Uh, this one was a little whipsaw signal, didn't pan out, but again, it kept you long most of the time here in the uh, QQQ when it was green, as was the 9 EMA over the uh, zero line there. So there it is. That's, that's what we're looking at. The, uh, the levels that I had before, support levels once broken become resistance. I could certainly add a couple lines here. Let me give you one more. This is really the level I'm watching now right here, more so uh, these recent highs. Uh, you, can, you can have some reactions there. You have that reaction high. So we'll call it a zone about right here. This is going to be a wall of resistance. If QQQ can punch through there, uh, that will most certainly be bullish. Uh, I'm not expecting it. Uh, even though, and I normally would go long on a divergent low in the 60 minute, uh, we don't have, like I said, on all my indicators, this is not confirmed. And um, we had some bearish developments recently on the daily time frame as well. So at the very least, I'm going to sit back and watch this for today, see what happens and, um, and watch these resistance levels. But I still favor a move down here to 151.20 and then 149.20 before we take out these recent highs. But right now, there's going to be some noise. So far, we're seeing that today with the Qs trading up about 0.62%. All right, that's enough on that. Let's look at the uh, futures. Futures tell you a little bit better story. I noticed earlier this morning, uh, futures were down pretty good uh, in the Qs. And uh, this is the NQE mini, 60-minute chart. Uh, so uh, they were down, but they reversed before the open. That looks like uh, central time there, 4 to 5 o'clock central time. And then they had a sharp ramp up. Now that put in a divergent low. You can see we had a divergent low on this previous reaction low right here, but we just extended that. We made another low, and uh, that just extended. So we still have positive divergence at that low. And um, as such, this may need to play out. And again, it looks just similar to QQQ. Just watch this area up here. I have this former support level 6374. Uh, you probably want to put another line up there above that. Uh, let me do that for you right now. And just kind of cap those recent reaction highs. There it is. You have some reactions there, some reactions there. And that line's about 6394. So that would be that upper threshold zone. Um, I don't think we get there. What I'm looking for today is a reversal. And if that happens, let me tell you, that would be very bearish. When I see divergences that don't pan out, um, that's almost akin to a fa failed breakout. Uh, failed breakouts, as you guys know, if it's a long side breakout, it's very bullish. If it's a you know short sell signal, you know breakdown of a pattern, and then prices ramp back up, that could be very bullish. And you usually see a lot of short covering. Prices go the other way. Uh, similar here, you have this bullish divergence. So on face value. Um, the bulls should be stepping in here. Long should be stepping in and buying. And they did. You know, there's an impulsive stick there. Uh, but let's see fall through today. If we close the day red, this is where I'm going with this. If we close the day red, those divergences haven't panned out. And if we go to this daily time frame, here's what I'm looking at. Yesterday, we put in a uh, bearish engulfing candle. Now, you want to look for bearish engulfing candles after, you know, around the top of a prolonged uptrend. So there's your bearish engulfing candle. Uh, you can see it engulfed the previous day's body. Uh, that one wasn't because it was a big red candle, but it, uh, the body of that doji was up above it. So there's a bearish engulfing. Uh, last time we had one before that, look for them at the top of an uptrend. There's one right there. That was confirmed. You see the red candle. So I look for not only a bearish engulfing, but I have to see follow through uh, at least in the next day or the second day after. So if we close, you know, we could close green, maybe slightly green somewhere down here, but I don't want to see us close up towards the top half of this candle. If so, then there's really no confirmation of that sell signal. It's just noise, we'll call it. Um, but when you get here's a bearish engulfing right there. There's the red candle, and you can see what happens. So these are confirmed, what I call confirmed bearish engulfing candles. And from the highs, that one, we dropped quite a bit. There's one there. We fell for, you know, more so in time than price, but these were, you know, a few percentage points. I think that was maybe 4 or 5%. And uh, you can go back, and you'll, you'll see them throughout time. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for today. 
So should we close, especially a red close down below yesterday's close uh, or below the bottom of the body of that candle, uh, that would A, help to you know validate this bearish engulfing candlestick uh, and also show that those divergences, that divergent low today did not play out for a trend reversal. I'm not talking a pop. We had a, you know, a little bit of a rise so far pre-market pre and, and after the market opened today. But I'm talking uh, based on the scope of those divergences on the 60 minute time frame I just covered, that should send us to new highs. If it doesn't, something is wrong and there's been a change of uh uh, dynamics in the market here. So either way, time to you know sit back, see what happens today. I wouldn't go. If you want to go long, I t I'll tell you this right now. If you want to go long with a stop below uh, today's lows, that certainly looks objective. Your downside's minimal, um, but I'd rather wait and see how today shapes out before I do anything uh, with the Qs or NQ. Jumping back to yesterday, I put up a video and, and I didn't realize until after the video that somehow got cut off towards the end. I only got cut off the last couple minutes. And, and if you freeze that video, as I, I made a note uh, afterwards, I added a comment that you can freeze a video just before the end. It shows what I was trying to get to. But in that video, I made the point that, uh, uh, as which most of us know, for years now, there's been a, a consistent shift towards index investing away from active management, meaning uh, the way mutual funds and pension plans used to be they'd have stock pickers at the home individual or maybe a team of stock pickers and trying to pick the best stocks and avoid the worst and, and therefore outperform the market which a lot of them did for years um, and, uh, and then in recent years that uh, those outperforming the market was really dropping off um, you know it was uh, index index funds were outperforming the stock pickers let's just put it that way so why pay for the fees for uh, you know the active management there's additional commissions you got to pay the management fee all that good stuff so there's a lot of money went into index investing okay so i covered that most of us know that uh, but it, ex it, it, it expands, it's, it's gone so far, and that's my concern I was trying to make, that those market-leading FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Alphabet, that those companies are top-heavy in just about all the stock funds out there, even those that are supposed to be, quote-unquote, stock picking, like the Fidelity Contra Fund. This is one of the world's largest mutual funds with assets under management. Uh, so, you know, it's going to have a big impact on the market if these FANG stocks get hit. Let me show you. And I went over this yesterday just before the video stopped. I went over the fact that uh, the fund seeks capital appreciation. And uh, this is where I got a laugh out of it. They invest in securities of companies whose value it believes not fully recognized by the public. Uh, yeah, I guess you can interpret that any way you want, saying that if you think Apple and Facebook and Amazon and Alphabet are all undervalued and the public doesn't realize what their value is, I, I don't know. I just I, I, I find that humorous. Uh, but there it is. And not only that, this is, again, this is the Fidelity Contra Fund. I've known this fund. I've, I've dealt with this fund. I've had money in it, money out of it, bought and sold it for years back in the 90s and 2000s. Um, had clients in this fund. It, 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 it's supposed to find those off the beaten path stocks, beat down, unloved. And that's what they used to do. And they did a great job at it. And now look what they're doing. They're just indexing. That's all they're doing. And that's my point. It's crazy how all these funds and they're top heavy, you know, six, 7% weighting in Facebook, four and a half in Amazon. Uh, Alphabet is uh, almost 7%. You take both share classes, Alphabet A and B down here. Alphabet nearly four, Microsoft. So there's your fangs. Uh, that's the point I was trying to make yesterday, and that's where the video was cut off. Um, and you take it a step further. It's not just mutual funds. Certainly that's that's one, one thing here, but let's look at the uh, CalPER. CalPERS, um, if you're from California, you've probably heard of it, or if you're in the investment community, uh, I'm sure you've heard of CalPERS. It's the it's the it's the largest pension fund. Uh, it's 300 billion dollars in assets. This article is a little bit old, um, but it uh, let's see here. It had a uh, the point of this article is. Uh, let me try to find it here. Ah, 
wrong article. I wonder I was having a tough time with that one. Okay, th I, I just did a quick Google search. I opened a couple pages. This one is uh, dated back in March 2013. So given it's a little stale, but they go on to, to reiterate, reiterate everything I said here earlier, uh, that uh, there's been a shift in recent years into uh, index investing. And at this point in time, they were, as you can see from the title, CalPERS was considering um, more indexing. Now, the thing is, at that point, they already had about 60% of their allocation in, in stocks, equity markets, was already in passive index tracking portfolios, i.e. index funds, given they all might not be the S&P 500, certainly not all the QQQ, but I can assure you the majority, knowing it CalPERS and, and how they're, you know, they're, they're trying to balance risk with growth, um, can assure you the majority are large cap, hence the majority of the stocks in there or the leading stocks would be the fangs. I think that's safe to say. And um, the remaining 40%, again, back in 2013, the remaining 40% of their stock portfolio was managed externally by active investment management firms. That means stock pickers. Uh, and that at this point, they were considering going increasing the indexing above 60%, which I can only imagine since 2013 they did because that's that's continued to have been the trend until recently. We've seen some some we've seen some stock pickers outperforming in uh, some of the hedge funds and, and, and mutual funds and you know professional managers in the last few quarters. But uh, either way, uh, and if you 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 can only imagine that uh, all most of the other big pension funds around the country uh, and world for that matter also have uh, you know have moved more towards indexing. So. And I'm not the only one to talk about this. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of seasoned veterans in the market have talked about it. And it's, you know, again, there's, it's a big if. Will that, uh, will they unwind that when the indexing, when that trend from indexing finally uh, starts to move away from things? Will it be a gradual move out or will it be a rush for the exits? And that's, that's my concern. So um, the takeaway from that, just, just, you know, be, be prepared for anything. And, you know, if that were to start to happen, whether it's now or three years from now, and you see this just, just relentless pounding of those, those over owned, over loved stocks, uh, don't underestimate how far and how fast they can fall. That's, that's the takeaway from it. Okay, and as promised, let's get to the energy stocks. Uh, okay, so energy, this is XLE, Spider Select Energy Sector ETF. Uh, you can see the trend lines. You know, they had this high up here, divergent high on the PPO. We had a price channel here, a little false break. Everything that I've gone over in the past, we've been in and out of these stocks, uh, mostly long over the last couple of years. Trend lines, they work well. You know, the divergences, uh, trend lines, technical analysis has been working well on these. So at this point here, if you recall back a few weeks ago, you know, we were long at some point. We were long here, XES and some others uh, got out because my concerns were that this was a divergent high. I pointed that out here at the time. You can see right where the crosshairs are. And we certainly got that correction. I labeled this S1, support one, support two, support three. So we punched through a little overshoot of S1. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. We fell right on S1 almost to the button, you can see, and we traded around it for a couple weeks. So there's tech technical analysis doing its job. I also had mentioned back at the time that from this point on, we had a, a bullish cross on one of my favorite trend indicators, the PPO signal line, the 9 EMA. And that with that test of S1, was also a back test of the uh, zero line, that dotted line there. And as I've gone over many times in the past, that zero line, um, not only does it define trends as bullish when, when the PPO 9 EMA is above it, bearish when below, but it often acts as support and resistance when tested up from above or below. You can see back here, crossover from a bearish trend that ended the bear market in energy stocks. Uh, we had a bullish cross and we remained uh, above that level with uh, quite a few successful tests, back tests of that line. Then when we went bearish right here, we had some uh, back tests from below. This one briefly shot above, a little whipsaw signal, nothing's perfect, but pr pretty darn close. And again, so you can see the PPO turning up. So this is bullish. However, that's a pretty powerful divergent high. And when I see a divergent high on a daily time frame. I'm looking for not just a quick pullback move, but a, a lasting trend change, just like this divergent high here that led to a lasting correction, this divergent low here that led to a powerful, pretty powerful rally. Um, and now 
here's the thing. Okay, so I have the trend indicator bullish. I know I'm giving you mixed signals, but I'm going to give you my take. I'm bearish right now, near-term bearish on the energy sector. Uh, that is because we just made another, uh, just simply an extension or another divergent high here with this most recent high. Uh, so therefore, uh, and I could also put some, I could put a resistance line there as well. You see this previous reaction high, these previous lows, these previous reaction highs. So at best, I see maybe a little bit of upside here in the energy stocks, but I think the risk reward is not favorable. I think the risk reward is skewed to the downside. Even if we trade sideways to slightly up for a while, uh, that's my take based on uh, the chart of XLE. Uh, for a while there, I was covering XCS like crazy, talking about this inverse head and shoulders pattern, and it has morphed into, uh, and I got to say, there's, you know, glass half empty, glass half full thing going on here. Uh, this is a beautiful looking uh, complex inverse head and shoulders pattern. You get these, you know, multiple two left shoulders, two right shoulders. This is a, this was a right shoulder here. This is just a second right shoulder, right prices right back up to the neckline. Um so be on be on watch for a breakout. Um, you know I can certainly, you know, make a case bullish or bearish right now for the energy stocks. Um, near term bearish, and I think that if we do get a breakout here, because as, as you can see, any breakout, uh, unless those divergences are burned through, and that's a possibility, it's going to be a divergent high. Uh, so maybe maybe we see something like this, um, a breakout here. Uh, above the neckline soon, that would trigger a you know, breakout of this inverse head and shoulders pattern, a breakout, which then reverse and comes back in and back tests that line, um, but we could also fail. Uh, here's a trend line to watch. We have a pretty nice uptrend line forming. So if this pattern fails to really play out as a reversal pattern, like inverse head and shoulders patterns are, they're bottoming patterns, they come after a prolonged downtrend, uh, then watch for a break of this downtrend, uh, this uptrend line. That would be bearish. So I'm throwing a lot of things out there, but I just personally don't like chasing breakouts uh, when you have divergences in place. Um, but if they burn through these divergences, you know, first take out this peak, and of course, if they take out this peak, now we might be all the way up here to my first target. If so, uh, I have the second target here. I'm watching this, and I'm going to be flexible here. If I see enough evidence that says, you know what, these divergences may just get taken right out, this is a powerful basing pattern, then I might jump on board. I might not catch the entry, might catch it a little later, might catch on a back test, who knows, maybe even a pullback to this downtrend line. Um, but that's what I wanted to share um, my thoughts on. There's just too many mixed signals. And if I can't make a clearly bullish or bearish case to be in a stock or a ETF long or short, then uh, step aside. You know, there's too many other opportunities out there. And trading is all about putting the odds as much in your favor as possible. If you don't, you're just going to take one step forward, two back. Okay, and then finally, crude oil. Obviously... Uh, you know, the same way that I, if I'm trading the gold mining stocks, I'm going to follow gold, take my cues from, from the metal. Uh, same, you have to do that with the energy sector too. You'd be, uh, I think, foolish or remiss to trade XLE or XES or anything without keeping one eye on, on crude oil. So uh, I think that that would make sense to most. So here's a, here's a chart. I'm trying to squeeze this in here. I've already shrunk it down a little bit, but... Uh, this is a, uh, let's see, a, about a two-year chart, two and a half years maybe, of West Texas Intermediate Crude. Okay, again, I, I know I've cut a little bit of the chart off here, but uh, all right, what stands out to me? There we have this uh, a pretty well-defined uptrend line, so let's watch that uptrend line. Uh, I could probably tighten it up a little there, but let's leave it here. With stock charts, you have to enter that annotation mode. It's a pain in the butt. You can't just modify a chart when you're in there. Uh, like you can with some of the other charting programs. We'll leave that trend line alone. If you want, just tighten it up to those recent uh, reaction lows there. And that takes the form of a, a rising wedge pattern complete with divergences. So you have a bearish rising wedge pattern confirmed with negative divergences. Uh, you can go back for many, many years or at least a few years here on this chart. That's one, two, it's over three years. Uh, overbought overbought and the thing is look at look at uh you know go to where prices are when you see the overbought readings see what happened from there you can see that uh you know that marked up a major high right there we were overbought here and all my notes are on this chart this chart's been posted you know many times over the years uh overbought overbought 
you get the point overbought come right up here to this point overbought corrections uh, and now we're overbought with divergence so sometimes when you have two overbought readings in close proximity as you do here uh, you pay more attention to the divergence in the first reading and so that tells me uh, we're coming back probably to at least that $54 level on crude would be my guess again that's my minimum target there uh, so that's that and uh, you know just like I you know you want to be looking to go short or get out of your longs when uh, crude is overbought uh, oversold readings especially with positive divergence are, are bullish as was this one right here and that that led to that leg up uh, so there it is. Um, this plays in heavily to my analysis on um, XLE and, and XCS and all those other ones. And let's just take a look at the weekly chart of crude and we'll wrap this up. Okay, this is a weekly chart. This one spans 20 years, so two decades of crude oil prices. Uh, again, it's, it's cut off a little bit, so let's move it over here to the right edge of the chart. And let's pull this down a little bit. There you go. So now you can see everything. Uh, what stands out to me here? Well, there's a, there's a previous reaction, this dotted line right here. And we're not there yet. That gives us a potential for a little more upside in crude. Looks about $61, $62 level right there, that previous reaction high. That's what I would call minor resistance. It's not you know, it's not very well defined. There's a couple reactions way back here in the past, but uh, either way, I'm sure the market will be targeting those those highs from 2015 right there uh, as a potential resistance zone. So you have that. The other things that stand out to me here again on this weekly time frame are uh, really in the RSI, looking at the overbought and oversold readings. Now, if you followed me for a while, you probably heard me say this before: overbought is not a very useful timing indicator if you will or a reason to sell or get out of your longs in, a, in an uptrend or in a primary bull market however it does do a pretty good job uh, of working as a both a you know reason to get out as well as almost a timing indicator i wouldn't use it standalone during a downtrend and my, my point is what I'm, what I'm getting at here is during a bull market or primary uptrend overbought tends to become very overbought once you hit the overbought level like you did right here actually um, you had a little pullback and you became much more overbought and that was months right there of persistent overbought readings and the correction didn't even set in until the second tag back here or the, actually the third tag of the 70 level or yeah 70 level on the RSI and that put in a divergent high as marked there again this was in a bull run here from 1999 all the way up to 2008 and you can see again very overbought very overbought and the corrections were relatively minor overbought there overbought there here we were extremely overbought didn't really phase crude that much pushed up made a divergent high and that's what you want to look for these divergent highs are your major turning points when you can see those especially with extreme overbought or oversold readings okay so my point is during a bull market overbought can stay overbought and often does for quite a period of time so it's not really a great um, sell signal or reason to go short or even to sometimes close out your position if you're a trend trader however once a you know a top starts that was the top in crude uh, pushed up traded sideways for a while but you can see we had a relatively fleeting reading there and a correction uh, the only other time that we've actually hit we came very close there so we'll call that oversold or overbought and boom that marked the top so you can see these were no longer persistent readings they were no longer deeply over overbought and we just recently kissed for the first time since 2011 we hit the 70 level now uh, it'd be nice to say with confidence that the bear market in crude oil is over, but you can't. You can't do that looking at this chart. There's just not enough evidence. So therefore, if you go over to the under the assumption that we're in a bear market uh, in crude, then we just hit a uh, oversold reading, then that will probably be it for a while and crude will reverse. However, if this is a new bull market, and I made a pretty good case, you know, back before we got, I was very bullish on the energy stocks back here and uh, in, in early 2016, even times in 2017. Uh, this was a very, very powerful divergent low, extreme oversold readings. I think as oversold as crude's ever become, at least going back for two decades here. So that 
you know, there's a good chance this is a new bull market. Uh, early, early stages of a new bull market. And in, in other words, the bear market in crude is over. If so, then you can expect that this reading uh, may become more oversold. I didn't want to confuse you. didn't want to give you too much, you know. Uh, but that's, that's what I'm looking for now. So right now, until proven otherwise, let's just, this is more of a heads up, we'll call it, okay? I'm not saying this is a sell signal outright, short crude, get out. But it's giving me pause for taking, for example, that breakout on XES. Uh, and again, go back here. Uh, the inverse holds true during a bull trend. Just to illustrate my point a little further, uh, there was a brief tag of the oversold level, the 30 level on the RSI, followed by a rally. 30 level, strong rally. And look, the point is these were very shallow readings. They barely hit the 30 level followed by a strong reversal, and they were very fleeting. Okay, this one came close, boom. Uh, but once we entered a bear market, we became more deeply oversold. Uh, and here's some deep and uh, prolonged oversold readings. So there it is, a little bit of cross mixed signals. I wanted to kind of get it all out for you, let you guys figure out what you want to do with crude. But uh, if nothing else, you know, Maybe keep it light, or if you're swing trading, if you think we're going to get a breakout of that XCS, uh, take the breakout, just set your stop and let it go. Um, you know, I'd at the very least allow for a back test of that neckline on XCS if it does break out. And before I leave crude, by the way, here's the 800 pound gorilla in the sector uh, XOM, Exxon Mobil, uh, at very, very solid resistance. When I say solid, look at all these reactions. Just this line I have here around a little shy of 84. I just look at the number of reactions, the number of times that Exxon Mobil has either failed under that most recently, in recent years, going all the way back to early 2017. And before that, there's a little bit of an overshoot, but you can see there. So most importantly is in recent years, that, that's been resistance. Now, again, bullish if it breaks out. But if it does, uh, you know, here's the thing, you're going to have that divergence. And the way I'm reading this, this uh, the PPO is pointing up now, we very well may get a breakout. And then if we do, it m will probably look something like this would be my take. We'll break out, put in a divergent high, and then uh, that'll prove to have been a false breakout because that would be a pretty powerful divergent high. And that could bring prices all the way back down here, possibly again to that 80 level. So that's the thing. I'm not taking a long breakout in the energy stocks, but uh, if you know if the charts change and convince me to do so, maybe I will. Uh, let's see. Promised you gold. There's gold. Uh, not a huge thing because we're still somewhat within that trading range, but there was a breakout today. We're down 1%, which is a decent move for gold. And you can see this uptrend line, quite a few reactions here. We broke down. Uh, we're still not below this reaction low back here yet. So it's not the end of the world, but I've also noted here, uh, you know, you can see that trend indicator of the PPO cross bearish all the way back here and it's remained bearish. And just recently we're coming in, we back tested. We're back testing right now. Cause again, I look at the signal line, the last, to the two to cross that that'll filter out a tremendous amount of whipsaws from using the ppo line if you use that white line the ppo line has rolled over showing them the momentum has crossed to the downside now obviously you can see it too in prices therefore this back test right now uh, is looking like it's going to fail with that white line so trend indicator is bearish maybe a failing at the back test of that level and most importantly, we have a breakdown right in here. So uh, right now, unless you snap back up above that trend line soon, uh, the near-term outlook for gold is uh, bearish, but I wouldn't short it here either. I just tell you that right now. I just don't see enough in the charts to short it. So just want to share my thoughts there. All right, it's been a long video. Uh, as always, if you didn't do it already, you can use the settings button on these videos to increase the playback speed to one and a quarter, 1.5%, uh, one and a half percent, uh, playback speed, one and a half times that is, um, and shorten the duration. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.